Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's botanical briefing. Uh, you're in for a treat. Uh, we are joined by um, a, a wonderful group of individuals from the Duncan McClellan Gallery up in St. Pete, uh, four artists and one artistic director. Uh, so it should be um, a wonderful hour of discussion, uh, kind of peeling back the curtain on, on life as an artist and uh, life as part of the artistic community up in, in St. Petersburg and as part of the Tampa Bay region. A um, couple things real quick, um, just kind of housekeeping matters, and then I will introduce Duncan and we'll, we'll kick off for the day. Um, if you would uh, remain muted, uh, hopefully we won't mute or unmute everybody unintentionally, but we'll do our best. Uh, but if you as participants can remain muted throughout the presentation, that would be great. Um, if you have questions, you're more than welcome to upload them into the chat feature, and um, my colleague Kelsey and I will keep an eye on that. And then uh, we will sort of field those questions at the end of the presentation. So we'll uh, uh, allow everyone to kind of uh, present and speak, and then we will be able to address uh, questions and have discussion at the end of the presentation. Um, I think unless there are uh, any major questions at this point, we'll, we'll kick off uh, by introducing our great friend and partner, Duncan McClellan, uh, established glass artist and gallery owner up in St. Pete, and a great partner of Selby Gardens over the last four years on the Nature of Glass exhibitions, which we've held here uh, and which have been extremely well received. Um, Duncan, established artist, uh, but also, um, as we'll discuss today, a uh, great sort of educator and mentor and collaborator with, with other artists from around the world. And his gallery has become a kind of nexus that has drawn artists from all over to this region uh, and has really made this region known for uh, this particular and very unique and wonderful art form. Um, for those that have met Duncan in the past, the other thing that will, will no doubt uh, be um, sort of defining characteristic of that uh, that exchange is, is Duncan Spirit. He's a tremendous individual and, and someone uh, that we, uh, whose friendship we tre uh, treasure here at Selby Gardens and we're, we're great, uh, very grateful to have him here today. Um, and I will hand it over to, to Duncan and he will um, speak and, and introduce the artists. And as mentioned, we'll be able to field questions at the end. So Duncan, thank you for your, your friendship and for your participation and over to you. Well, same here, David, and I really want to thank uh, all of the Selby team. Uh, every year that we come in to do the show, it's, it's such an honor for us, but um, to watch the, the team, how they get excited about the work coming in and create this stage uh, for it that is incredible. So kudos, and we are very grateful to, to be operating with you. Um, I want to tell you an overview of what our complex is about. Um, about 10 years ago, I took an old warehouse uh, that was used as a tomato packing plant and converted it to a gallery that has evolved to being one of the largest in art class galleries in the East, um, as well as um, we've been able to educate the public and become a platform for other artists because that was a real interest of mine in developing this place. And I'm very proud of the artists that we uh, present. Uh, and you'll see some wonderful artists that are part of our team. Uh, these are different shots of uh, the gallery at different times. Uh, we do revolving shows. Um, that um, uh, go on for about a month and a half, and then we have a whole new group of work and artists. So we hope you come visit. Um, the gallery is a, a, a wonderful presentation of the artist's work. Uh, the gallery also has a sculpture garden. And uh, although mine is not as uh, magnificent as Selby Gardens, uh, but uh, we do have over 70 tropical fruit trees uh, and uh, nuts. And uh, I think that's the affinity that I have with Selby is uh, we, we both share a very love of, uh, of nature. 
And that shows up in the, uh, not only in the work, but the gallery itself. Um, and then we decided to, uh, as part of a, a thing that I had always done as an artist, is try to educate. And I've done a number of uh, kids programs and we actually became a 501c3 and we go into inner city schools um, and we're teaching not glass blowing in, when we go into the schools. We're teaching how an artist uses geometry or uses chemistry to create colors or uses algebra to figure out what that piece has to sell for. And it's a uh, part of the mentoring process that we go through. Um, and then we are a platform for educating not only our artists, but the general public. We bring in very famous uh, glass artists like Rick and Shelley Allen that um, are in many, many museums around the world. We also present uh, uh, residency time for emerging artists. And that's a very important function because for an emerging artist to be able to afford a body of work, to be able to have it, to progress in their career, uh, this gives them a, a really great shot at um, having a body of work, having uh, experience in doing a show, giving a lecture, and this sets them up for uh, great rewards down the road. Um, both Aya and Steve Hagen have gone on to, on to really um, excel in their careers. Uh, Lucky Gasman was uh, another one of our emerging artists that uh, I'm very proud of, uh, and he worked very hard when he was here. And uh, he's gone on to uh, uh, better things uh, uh, and thing, traveling over the, uh, in Europe, uh, actually working over there now. Alexis Silk and Mary Albas, uh, uh, artists that uh, we really respect, incredible sculptors. Uh, Alexis, uh, interestingly, is one of the few um, uh, female uh, glass artists working at the ARS Murano studio in Murano. She now lives in Italy. Uh, Mary Albas is centered in Vermont now. And in doing all these demonstrations, we pull in the public uh, because I think it's really important for the public to be able to see these master artists working and get a better idea. Um, with DMG School Project, it is focused on the education, not only on the history of glass, uh, but also the physical properties of glass. And as I explained before, we're not per se trying to teach kids glass, we're trying to use glass to uh, bolster what they've already learned in school. This is our mobile, these are our mobile units that we take to the schools. Uh, the large black one is our sandblasting unit, which is a three day lesson plan that we give the teacher the first day, we teach them, give them all the supplies, they go back and they teach this program, including the glass history, including, including some of the properties of glass, and they uh, set up their plates so that when they come over to our gallery and they get a tour of the gallery and a lecture uh, demonstration, and then they actually get to etch their plates. So it's a very complete education process. Then we also go into schools with the little mini furnace that you see on the left. Uh, that, is, uh, that allows us to go out to the schools to be able to teach, in some cases, four to 600 kids a day when we have a full school to be able to service. And I can tell you that from the principals that get back to us and tell us what it has done for the students, it is incredibly important and valuable.
some of our backdrops and some of our uh, uh, fine artists that are demonstrating for uh, groups. Some of the kids sandblasting and uh, then we have uh, individual artists that are uh, incredible pillars like Richard Jolly is a pillar of the contemporary glass movement. And he was willing to come in and teach kids for uh, three days and, uh, and actually have them participate in the building of making a piece. And it's incredibly generous of uh, some of these master artists that are attached to our gallery, um, as well as um, that we come in to do a show in particular. Um, we're lucky to have them be part of what we do. John Brecky is uh, teaching here, uh, and he was my most important glass artist uh, teacher. Uh, he really taught me a lot. He lives in Brooklyn, and that's actually, I studied in New York. And we do a number of lectures. That reaches a whole group in museums that want this information. Uh, here's Deanna Clayton, who has done a series of master classes for us. Uh, our master classes are designed for people that have never participated in glass before but they come out in a weekend making a beautiful bowl or uh, a project that is uh, a specialty of that particular master artist. Our lectures are very informative because it gives uh, the public a real insight of how and why uh, an artist does what they do. The vision for the Warehouse Arts District is a place where artists can move to, to live, work, and show their work. The city has made variances to allow for that, which has been very helpful. We've identified over 250 artists that live in about a mile square area, and more and more artists are moving in. And it's really exciting to see how all of this has happened. I think our part in how this is developed is just showing up. There were existing artists here already. It has snowballed to where many, many more artists want to be uh, living here. Many of our artists are uh, somewhat emerging artists and we're particularly proud of these two young men that have been working uh, at the DMG complex. And uh, Jack Alden is one of them and uh, take it away, Jack. All right, thanks, Duncan. Um, and that was a really awesome uh, explanation of everything we do. I'll try to follow that up. Uh, and, and thank you, uh, David and Kelsey and the uh, Selby Garden team for hosting this whole event. Um, I'm happy to be a part of it. Uh, I'm just gonna do a brief bio, um, a little bit about me. Uh, this is actually me working on a torch. Um, making a, uh, a group of commissioned pieces for Virginia Commonwealth University. Uh, I moved down to St. Petersburg, Florida uh, when I turned 18. I basically spent my whole life living in Vermont and I was really tired of the cold. Uh, so I moved for some warmer weather. Um, I was introduced to the glass scene when I got down there. I'd always been really curious about glass as a material and a medium. Uh, and when I got to St. Petersburg, I had my first opportunity to actually uh, work with molten glass. After doing that, I was introduced to the Chihuly collection and I saw the scope of, of what was possible and how, just how incredible um, of, of things you could do with, with this, with glass. Um, I also saw Duncan McClellan's gallery and decided that uh, my track was going to be uh, basically trying to be an artist and uh, work in galleries. And I haven't really looked back since. So we could do the next slide, please. So this is a piece I created, um, you know, a lot of the time you, you have to kind of 
learn and take ideas from other artists so you can start to find your own voice. And with all my time uh, kind of working in the, the gallery um, or the collection for Chihuly, I kind of, and I actually did a couple installs as well. I, I really liked this idea of combining pieces together to create this larger installation. And so this piece here, uh, it's actually made out of Bombay Sapphire bottles, um, a beautiful blue color. And it, it was important to try to marry two passions of uh, some clients, which were gardening and uh, drinking cocktails. <laughs> so uh, I, I basically took that and uh, a big part of my work is also about uh, upcycling and sustainability. Uh, thinking about what materials we're using, where they're coming from. And there's so many materials out there that might be discarded or considered trash, but they're truly beautiful. Um, and so that last picture was a series of, of trees that I created um, kind of based off of the Lorax and the whole message of, you know, the, being a voice for the voiceless and speaking for the trees and forests. And the next piece, uh, the next Jack, slide. Can I just uh, interrupt you for one moment? Can we sure, go back Dr. to the last slide? I want to brag on Jack a little bit. Uh, this collection of work is being presented right now at the Florida Craft Art Exhibition. Um, and uh, uh, he won the director's award on this work. So, so uh, sorry to interrupt Jack, but I, I'm really proud that you did that, and uh, congratulations. Sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. Thank you, Duncan. Um, and uh, I feel very honored to have been accepted to the show and, and to have won the award. So thank you for, for plugging that in. Um, and this is really, I really do uh, draw a lot of my inspiration from nature, uh, kind of growing up in Vermont and being surrounded by trees um, and going on hikes and camping. Uh, when I was able to start channeling some of my, uh, you know, my thoughts and feelings uh, into glass, it ended up being these kind of whimsical, uh, you know, aspects that you might see in nature. And so this is one of my first pieces. Uh, it's a sandblasted tree uh, that really kind of is ha it has movement, it might be blowing in the wind, um, and yet it is a solid piece uh, and, it, and it looks like it's flowing still, but it is now back to its solid form. So this, uh, again, just kind of the idea of taking concepts of, of nature, trying to create uh, some sort of uh, floral interpretation I created the vase and it almost kind of looks like water. And then you have this glass flower coming out of it that actually doesn't need any water. Um, and so this, uh, this is a piece I, I was commissioned to make in uh, Richmond, Virginia for the, um, the St. Mary's uh, Chapel. And so they were redoing the space. They had these gorgeous stained glass windows they were putting in that were uh, designed to kind of tell the story of the ch changing seasons. And so this, uh, I was commissioned to make a holy water bowl um, that kind of uh, matched the windows. You don't see the windows yet. Um, they hadn't quite been installed, but the bowl has a lot of blue uh, kind of talking about the, the oceans and how much water is on this planet and the importance of water, as well as um, kind of adding in some other random elements of color, uh, you know, the, the whites for snow and the orange and uh, yellows for changing leaves. And the, um, you know, there's some green in there as well. Uh, another aspect of my life uh, that's really, I, I keep talking about, you know, nature and the, the oceans are really important to me. Uh, again, I'm, I'm from Vermont, so I never really 
uh, understood them. I would, I would vacation places and play in the ocean, but I never really understood the, how important they are in the eco ecosystem that they have. And so um, kind of after moving to St. Pete, uh, I, I moved away to really focus on glass. I went to the Penland School of Crafts in North Carolina. Um, and uh, that led me to Virginia Commonwealth University. I, I, I'd started a couple of studios and then I had this feeling like I needed to move back to St. Pete, uh, like I had unfinished business. So um, one of the, I, I had an adventurous spirit. I moved out of my apartment and then three days later, uh, the quarantine and travel bans were announced. So uh, I had to figure out where I was going to live, and I ended up buying a sailboat, um, kind of completely fixing it, and uh, I was able to move my sailboat down and have a place to live. And thanks to to Duncan for giving me an opportunity to be able to, you know, work in his gallery and basically support myself through that transition. Thank you, Jack. Um... Uh, that's a wonderful story, and we're so delighted to have you at the gallery. Um, we're going to also hear from Matt Zidick, who works uh, with Jack and Duncan at the Duncan McClellan Gallery. And Matt, I believe you're here. Right here, yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you for having me. Um, this is exciting. I'm, I'm Glad I get to talk about glass in St. Petersburg and the glass community. And uh, so we'll start at the beginning. I, uh, I grew up in Southern Illinois uh, in the Shawnee National Forest. And there I got to spend a lot of time outside in nature, uh, just spending time observing things and, and just being in it all. And uh, it really inspired me to uh, do visual art because you know nature is just this great uh, captivating scene that you can draw so much inspiration from. So that's what I, I use in my art. And uh, yeah, I just have a great time doing it. So and there's a picture of my dog there enjoying the stream. So this is me at SIU. <clears throat> um, I'm creating a octopus and the uh, yeah, so this is the name of this piece is greedy octopus and I have my assistant uh, uh, Eriko Kobayashi. Uh, helping me create this piece. And this is a uh, piece that I hot sculpted. Um, it took a while to put together. It's actually two separate pieces uh, combined. Uh, yeah. So this is a fun one. And this was a big jump in uh, learning about glass. Oh, so um, yeah. So moving down to uh, St. Petersburg, I, uh, I got really inspired by being around the ocean. I hadn't really gotten, hadn't really had the chance to be near the ocean that much. So I decided to uh, do a series using copper leaf, which creates this nice blue within uh, the glass and all this like sea foamish bubble texture. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the pieces that came out of that series. Um, yeah, so coming from a, a painterly background, I, I studied at uh, Oglethorpe University and uh, I, I had uh, art history background and uh, darkroom uh, photography development. And then later I moved to a community college, uh, Johnny Logan, where I studied under Drew Tucker. And he taught me a lot about uh, oil painting and how colors combine. So this is a piece that I wanted to kind of explore um, how glass and color mesh and what kind of shades and gradients you can get. And I, I really, uh, I'm really pleased with how the, uh, the contrasting teal and the red turned out in this piece. And you can sort of kind of get this painterly brushstroke effect in it. Yeah, so um, like I said, spending a lot of time outside in nature, um, I kind of almost envisioned my backyard as an oasis, some place that I could come to to uh, just hang out and, and you know, de-stress. And so I wanted to kind of translate that into, uh, into glass. And so I came up with this, this idea to uh, make a glass oasis fountain. Um, so some place where I could find tranquility um, using you know, glass as the vehicle for that. Um, so this is, uh, as you can see, the palm trees at the top. 
um, and then these this kind of lower um, existence or this like negative field underneath where uh, the water runs off and it just gets recycled to the top. It's like a uh, continuous flow. Okay, yeah, and this is another uh, piece as a part of the Oasis series. Um, as you can see, uh, Hozak is uh, touching one of the vines hanging down. Um, so again, touching on the, uh, the trees uh, as, as that kind of uh, rooted um, in, this, in this tranquility. Uh, so it's a, a nice place I like to come back to in my mind and these pieces help me get there. And there's another uh, uh, using a Sunspot Studios uh, color. Um, this is a nice uh, gradation um, in, a, in a tree based piece. So, yeah. And I guess I should talk about, oh, well, this is an interesting piece as well. So, this was actually a commission piece for uh, a NASA uh, scientist, Gabe Rogers, I believe is his name, uh, who sent the New Horizon to go study Pluto. Um, and he, uh, this was a birthday present for him. So uh, yeah, I was really excited to be able to make this piece. And um, you know, it's not exactly Pluto, but it's, it's close. So um, I know he was happy with it. So yeah. Yeah, so um, spending, so in Southern Illinois, there's a lot of dragonflies. And so I have a pond outside and I would go out there and I would, I would sit out there for you know, just hours. And uh, one day I had a dragonfly come and land on me and it just was hanging out. And, uh, and so coming on to my, I think it was my second year at SIU, um, I had to come up with a glass project. And so I was saying to myself, well, that was a, a very inspiring moment. So I kind of want to translate that feeling into, uh, into glass. And, and this is what I came up with. It's a combination of uh, Marini, um, frit and, uh, and color bar, bar all combined into a, uh, a hot sculpted piece. Oh yeah, so this is uh, an idea that I've been working on um, and it has to do with uh, luminescence, uh, bioluminescence. And I'm, I've been trying to imitate uh, nature in a lot of ways. I know there's a lot of uh, deep sea creatures and, and uh, fungi that all have this luminescent property and so I kind of wanted to, to capture that in my own way uh, using, uh, using glass. So uh, this, was, this is going to be a continuing uh, project of mine. So this is a, a base uh, for a, actually uh, a multiple tier stalag stalactite. And so this is going to be about six feet high and they're going to be um, yeah, five other similar looking shapes. So I'm excited to continue with this project and uh, get it get it made and put together. Yeah, I believe there's some more yet. So like I was talking about with the, the fungi, um, this is a, a and I actually for this for this piece and for all the luminescent pieces, I, I gather up phosphorus onto the glass and encase it. Um, and that creates and then when it interacts with the light, uh, it gets charged up and then when you bring it into the dark, it puts off this really radiating glow and I think it is very exemplified by uh, having the uh, uh, magnifying effect from the glass. So really happy with how this turned out. Here's, a, here's another one. And uh, these are actually at the, uh, at the gallery um, right now. Uh, this is a, another piece that I uh, sandblasted, uh, carved, um, and hot sculpted, um, touching on you know, the nature aspect again. Yeah, so I should uh, I should say that I I graduated from uh, SIU um, Southern Illinois University uh, a year ago actually um, so in May last year and it was a very interesting time to graduate because you know COVID was just in full swing um, and so I was trying to figure out what am I going to do uh, where am I going to go how am I going to get a job and so I started seeing, uh, I heard some people talk about St. Petersburg. Um, my uh, mentor, uh, Nadine Saylor, mentioned it a few times and she talked about how all these glass galleries were down there. And so I started looking into it and, and uh, I talked to a friend of mine, he was interested in moving. And so 
ended up coming down to St. Petersburg and um, it took me a couple months, but then I got involved in the glass community and, and I'm really happy to uh, be down here around all these creative people. Um, uh, so this is a piece I made at uh, in Jackson, Missouri at a, a glass blowing demo and it's a Kodama. And so the uh, Kodama represents, uh, if a, so if you see a Kodama in the forest, it represents uh, how the, the forest, if the forest is healthy. Uh, so in Hiro Maizaki's uh, movies, uh, I think it's Princess Mononoke, uh, the Kodama are used to uh, portray that. And so I uh, sculpted this with the help of uh, uh, Eriko Kobayashi and uh, we made this collaborative piece together and it turned out pretty uh, adorable. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jack, uh, Matt and Jack. Um, it's wonderful to have you also in St. Pete and in the Tampa Bay area and Sarasota area. And of course, um, all of this would not be possible without um, our other one of our other featured artists, Duncan McClellan. Well, thank you, Mary. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it's particularly wonderful to see this idea that we had 10 years ago come to fruition because not only are we bringing young people and young Turks up with great ideas that are taking glass into a whole new direction, but we have the masters that are attracted here to impart uh, other information that they know and to mentor. Um, in doing my work, uh, most of the work centers around overlays. Um, the pieces are uh, layers of color. Typically on the, the last layer is a continuous uh, color either done by a Swedish overlay method, which is inverting one bubble over another, and then I have a surface to be able to sandblast, or by using minute particles of colored glasses that are picked up on the surface, melted in, and then those are then carved. This piece, uh, the Metamorphos, uh, is on uh, one of the most luxurious cruise ships in the world. Uh, it's on the Regent Explorer. Um, I'm very proud that uh, a number of cruise lines um, use our gallery for purchasing works for them to have on display. Um, uh, this is uh, me sandblasting. Uh, most of my sandblasting is done in a cabinet. Um, and I use fairly low pressure and use aluminum oxide uh, to eat away at the glass surface. To create these images, they're either taped up using a resist tape that will uh, uh, resist the sand eating away behind it um, and only eat at the exposed areas, um, or there are multiple cuts of uh, different images that are laid down one at a time, such as the metamorphous piece. Uh, this is uh, one of the pieces that uh, somewhat iconic, uh, iconic for me. Uh, these symbols are 14th century alchemy symbols that make up the actual formula for glass. So if you know what the code is for each of those individual symbols, you'll see how they all relate to either the process of blowing glass or the ingredients that go in it. Metamorphous, uh, this is called 50th Cousins. And uh, it's, it's somewhat to relate how all of us are connected. Uh, because uh, we all are, I, it might sound um, uh, not correct, but uh, if we look at our lineages, we somewhere down the line, we're all connected. One of the pieces uh, that we've displayed at Selby, uh, the, this is called Three Graces. Uh, it's kind of my version of a porcelain piece uh, that uh, I grew up with that was very treasured by our family. 
So I decided to make my own version of the three graces. One of the hibiscus bowls because uh, one of the affinities that we have with Selby is my love of nature as well. Uh, we also do installations, uh, done uh, installations where we can take over a whole wall. Um, and uh, the piece on the right was actually purchased at Selby, I believe last year or the year before. And uh, the client uh, wanted us to make something that worked along with that particular piece that she purchased. And uh, it was a great project and I think it looks wonderful. Now, one of the pleasures that we have uh, of having this platform and it attracting uh, master artists is that we have these artists that somehow the universe, we became lucky enough to have someone like Douglas Merritt come into our lives because this man has more knowledge about glass blowing, about carving, and he does works that I still, he can explain it to me, and I have no idea how the man accomplished it. Uh, you really need to see his work, and we're so lucky that he is so generous with talking to not only um, uh, our emerging artists, but our other artists too, because like I said, the man has an incredible wealth of, of knowledge that he's very willing to share. These are case pieces that he builds up. Each of these different marinis that he's used to create these flowers and these leaves take days of preparation uh, before he's able to uh, start blowing a piece. So he might have a week and a half of preparation work uh, to create one of these cased vessels. And he layers these by picking them up at different points in the gathering to be able to give depth to the piece. And they're very, very strong um, uh, pieces that you lose yourself in by looking through these. Another one of his cased perfume bottles that has that wonderful depth uh, that uh, uh, is uh, rarely achieved. Uh, and uh, he's been very generous about teaching others this technique. Now, one of the things that always intrigued me about Doug's work was his ability to uh, do the silver overlays, uh, which is an older technique, but it, he has done it uh, wonderfully with this. Um, I still don't quite understand it, and I need Doug to explain it to me again uh, to fully appreciate everything that goes into this uh, beautiful work. Um, Doug, are you able to talk a little bit about this? Okay. So let's all go on to Doug's carving. Uh, this is what astounded me. Uh, can you hear me now or is that crazy? Still a little bit of an echo, Doug. Oh, gosh. That's okay. I, Duncan's doing a great job. <laughs> but, all right, Duncan, you take over, bud. Thanks, Doug. Uh, I'm sorry. Not a problem. We're happy you're here. Well, what really astounded me and how I met Doug was um, uh, he came into the gallery and pretty cool guy. And he said, you know, I'm a glass artist and I done a few things. And he was very humble. And he showed me probably one of the finest examples of glass work I've, I had ever seen. Uh, his ability to be able to carve underneath the glass and create these layers and then carve underneath and, and create this beautiful, uh, almost cage-like uh, uh, 
uh, flower arrangement around these paperweights, for the lack of a better term. Uh, he uses very specialized equipment. Um, uh, Doug was relating to me how he got the first equipment and he went into an old warehouse that a guy was getting rid of some dental equipment. And Doug said, I know what I can do with that, but it really takes the talent uh, to be able to uh, uh, create something like this Clematris, uh, if I'm pronouncing it right, uh, flower that uh, as you can see on the edge that it actually is standing off the piece. It, it, this could take months of carving and Doug could have lost it at the last second. And that's what happens with uh, sometimes with glass. Um, it teaches us to be very humble. <laughs> it teaches us a lot of different things. Um, but, uh, and one of the things it teaches us is how to be able to tap dance your way through a difficult situation. Another one of his beautiful cased pieces uh, that we are very honored to have these in the gallery. This I think is a stupendous piece. And I hope you, our audience, uh, when you have a chance to come to St. Pete, you stop into the gallery and see this cre incredible work. Well, we have a wonderful video of Doug working in the gallery. So here we go.
Well, thank you, Doug. Even though you weren't able to say too much, we got a glimpse of your mastery and uh, talent. Um, so thank you very much. And uh, now we just, to wrap it up, have a few images of uh, what we think um, illustrates how powerful the drawer of a hot glass is to the artist and to everyone who sees it. Here are some links that hopefully um, you can take a screenshot of and uh, go and watch at your leisure. And thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I believe that um, David and Duncan and our artists can field some questions. Yes, uh, Mary, thank you. And thank you to all the artists. That was, was wonderful. Uh, we've got a number of questions that have been submitted. Um, if I can maybe fire away with the first question and that might lead to a, a broader conversation. Uh, Matt, the first uh, question is, is for you. I, uh, we have a number of um, attendees who are fascinated by your bioluminescence series. And uh, you, you touched on it a little bit, but I, I, I think we would love to find out a little bit more about uh, how you are able to create that, um, uh, that feature of bioluminescence using the phosphorus that you mentioned and, and create yeah. an extraordinary effect. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I, I basically I gather up on the initial uh, layer, initial bubble. I gather up all the phosphorus and then I overlay another uh, layer over that and it traps it inside. Um, and then to get it lit, um, so it has to interact with uh, the UV light. So it can be sunlight or it can be a uh, another, you know, any any UV light. Um, and then, so that charges it up and then you take it into a dark room or shut the lights off and, and then it glows. Um, so I, I have a uh, different, uh, there's light blue, dark blues, whites. Um, so there's all sorts of variations you can get. Um, however, when you're working with phosphorus, it doesn't like to stick to the glass like normal frit. So it can be a bit tricky. It wants to fall back into the, uh, into the crucible where all the hot glass is. So, uh, mm -hmm. It's something to be wary of. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like it takes a lot of practice for sure, but the, the pieces are stunning. They're okay. really extraordinary. Um, Duncan, the uh, question maybe for you or for Doug about the, the layering of either color or um, uh, an image or motif in, uh, in the, the depth of the, the glass work that you're creating. Um, can you explain a little bit about how, like for example, with the pieces that you showed of Doug's, uh, where it looks like that there is a, a flower or other element embedded into a piece of glass, how that's built up through the layering process. We saw a little bit of it in the video, but if you can maybe um, elaborate on, on that in terms of the steps and how that's created. Sure, if I can take this, Doug, I'll explain a little bit of the process. By uh, the first gather, if you go into a furnace with a uh, hot uh, pipe, you're going to gather just so much glass and you pop a bubble in that. If you tried to gather all the glass at one time, it would have a tendency to want to fall off the pipe. So you're building up layers by going back into the furnace each time, taking another gather uh, on a previously blown bubble that has gotten a little cooler so that it does actually drag on more of this clear glass over the layers that you just uh, put onto that surface. Does that explain the process? It, it does, although I have to admit, like we were joking the other day, there's still an element of this that, um, you know, is, is wizardry and magic because you can see it and you can have it explained, but I can pretty much guarantee if you set me to do that, you'd have a lump of something in the corner. You would not have the beautiful works of art that you've all exhibited. You'd be surprised, David. <laughs> we need to get you up for a lesson. That yeah. would be great. Uh, <laughs> Duncan, we have a question uh, that 
applies to you and, and to Doug um, with your, your years of experience, um, if you could maybe reflect uh, for a minute on uh, how your, your work and your practice has changed, both, um, I guess, artistically or creatively and technologically, if there have been changes that you've seen over the course of your career. Doug, if you're able to answer, go ahead. But uh, if not, I'll go ahead and explain uh, where what has changed for me over the time period. Pretty much the blowing, we're using the same tools that have been used for hundreds and hundreds of years. The new advent tool uh, that has been used in quite a few years, but uh, is wet newspaper. Uh, we found that the New York Times folded in a particular way is the best pad, and you saw Doug using that in the film. That is a very important tool. Another tool that's been around for many, many years for us uh, is gravity. Uh, gravity works very well for glass, and it's learning how to control what the glass wants to do and you're, you're actually coaxing the glass to do what you want it to do. Uh, because often it really wants to do the opposite. You know, the bottom wants to be hotter than the neck and you want to reverse that whole process. Uh, the other uh, advantages that are new, uh, for an example, for me, I'm able to take um, images and they can either be made uh, uh, as photo resist. Uh, so you can actually photograph and use a, 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 a stencil to create images, or you can use a uh, sign cutting machine to basically cut out different images that you then put on the surface to act as a resist. Uh, it's combining those images that make up the story. Uh, other advantages, uh, for an example, um, in the hot shop, uh, for many years, they had to have somebody that would stand there. Uh, after a piece is blown, it has to go into an oven to slowly cool down to room temperature. Well, they used to have somebody standing at the dial, turning that temperature down one or two degrees every 15 minutes until the 24 cycle was ended, for an example. Uh, now we have computers that run those programs. So there's, there's some things that have changed, uh, but the basics for glass are steeped in centuries of, of um, tools and knowledge. Oh, that's great. And um... Matt and Jack, um, if you wouldn't mind um, maybe sharing with us what you're currently working on and maybe um, if your interest has been piqued by a potential future project, what that might be. Oh yeah, for me, I've, I've got multiple projects that I'm working on right now. Um, and uh, I mean, everything around just being at the gallery, I'm surrounded by so many different techniques and so many different designs that that it's really, you know, there's so much to explore. And uh, so, yeah, I'm really excited to, to keep making work down here and to uh, see what, you know. Oh, and also that's the lag type piece I was telling you about. That's a current project I'm working on. So we'll get that put together. Great. Um, yeah, I do have a couple projects underway. Um, and uh, it's been really great getting to, um, you know, even though it's super hot in the summer, and it's, it's pretty brutal blowing glass uh, with a relatively high heat index and then turning on a 3000 degree furnace and glory hole. It's been a real blessing to get to create some work and to keep the momentum going um, and to be able to work with Matt and have a, a teammate to, to create some stuff we wouldn't be able to make on our own. Uh, so we've actually been demonstrating um, on Saturdays and you got anybody's welcome to come check it out. Um, to see what we're working on and to take a look at the work in the gallery. Um, I've got a, a few different um, series and colors of those um, trees that are in the Florida Craft Art Show, um, as well as some pieces that kind of speak to 
uh, the oceans and, and the coral reef systems and what's happening with those right now. Yeah, it's a future project I think we're going to collaborate on. Um, bleached coral, I think, some large scale, something large scale. So, yeah. Yep. So stay tuned for that. Yep. That's great. And uh, Mary, maybe the last question for you. I'm noticing we're about at one o'clock, but um, if you would maybe touch on uh, your experience working with all of these talented artists as the artistic director of the gallery. Oh, thank you. It's It's been a real journey and a real pleasure. And I've learned so much in so many ways. Um, the working with Duncan and his experience and guidance has, has been wonderful. And uh, each artist that we uh, partner with um, teaches you so much about uh, their technique and uh, their life story. And also, you know, as a person, what it is to be an artist, what it is to be inspired, what it is to be dedicated to a life path. Um, and I think we're, you know, our tagline is we're not just a gallery, but, but part of that is that we try to bring that story and that inspiration uh, through each artist's work to the public. So you're not just looking at an object, you're really looking at a whole life when, when you see a body of work. So um, that is my experience. That's why I love uh, to be uh, the art director at Duncan's, uh, the Duncan McClellan Gallery and work with all these wonderful artists. So thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll, we'll wrap up here uh, to all of the presenters today. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing your, your story and the, the thank you. extraordinary works. Uh, I just want to mention that um, Duncan's pieces are on display currently in the Tropical Conservatory and on the grounds at the downtown Sarasota campus of Marie Selby Botanical Gardens. Um, we have the In Dialogue with Nature exhibition running through September 26th. Um, but just as a member of the community, uh, I you know, want to extend a, a heartfelt thanks to Duncan for, for what he's been able to achieve. Um, having the, the gallery and more importantly, the community of artists that you've drawn to the area uh, and that kind of orbit that, that, uh, that extraordinary space uh, has enriched the community as a whole. And it's, it's great to, uh, to benefit from it and be a part of it. And we very much appreciate your, your partnership and collaboration here at the gardens. Well, thank you, David. It's been my pleasure and our whole team's pleasure. You've oh, been very you. welcoming. Thank you. thank you. And to all the attendees today, thank you for taking part. Uh, we appreciate the support and uh, we will see you in the garden soon. Thanks Terrific. very much. Take care. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thanks, Doug, for being here also. Thank you.